Welcome back to a sunny day in Thailand, but as you can see, not all is well in the world of solar power. So let's dive in and figure it out. If we look back to September 15th, we had a power failure right here at 323. 115 came back to life, 116 did not. This is my second failure of a Chinese microinverter from AliExpress. The first failure took them a month to get the new replacement inverter back to me. So, in desperation, I checked around my hometown here. We have three solar power companies in a relatively large town slash small city. One of the companies even has the word microinverter on their website, but when I went to visit them, the guys in the shop seemed like they had never heard the term microinverter in their lives. The other shop didn't have a microinverter. And the third shop, which is kind of still under construction and waiting to open, and has been for the last three months. Every time I walk by, I look in the window. They're no help. Now, there was a possibility in the next town down the highway, there is a solar shop, and I visited there over a year ago, and I held a microinverter in my hand. But this was before I, I built up my system, and I was just shopping for possibilities. I contacted the owner on Facebook, Four days later, he said, yes, I have. And I said, please give me a picture of the inverter and the price. So he sends me a picture. It's a 300 watt microinverter. It's pretty much what I'm looking for. No price. Again, I say, what's the price? The price he quotes is basically double what the AliExpress Chinese microinverters are going for. So I replied back. I sent him a picture from AliExpress and said, this is your competition. I would really like to buy locally, but I'm not going to pay more than double the going price for an identical product. So he offered me a 10% discount. Wah, wah, wah. So off I go to Bangkok to the electric vehicle conference. I walk all over the show. It's the ASEAN Sustainable Energy Conference in conjunction with the Thailand uh, Electric Vehicle Association of Thailand in conjunction with, for some reason, boilers and pumps, and for some reason, something new this year, uh, mechanical factory tools, which was really cool, but not in any way, shape, or form sustainable solar energy or anything else. I've found nobody on the show floor that had microinverters. So, I checked our friend Google, found uh, a company, messaged them, and the, the man responded back. Was, it was beautiful. It was wonderful customer service. And my plan all along was to use, obviously, the highest quality parts I can get. But this being Thailand, my choices are sometimes hobbled to the availability of products that are available in other parts of the world. Hence, I went with AliExpress and the Chinese microinverter. So, working with Paul, I ordered three N-phase microinverters, three cables, three terminators, and a quick disconnect tool. Uh, transferred the money into his account on a Saturday morning, and I will have all of the equipment tomorrow. Welcome. In an interesting twist of fate, the electric utility guys are doing a lot of work outside. I'll have to go and check that out later. And it's also the day that I will tick over 100 kilowatt hours on my solar power system since it went live last December. That's not a lot, but as a science experiment, that's okay. This I could do this in three days on my system back in California, but that was a 5,000 watt ground mount system. And I just have my little balcony system here. And 
The Enphase equipment just arrived all on the same day. So let's get this prepped and I'll wire it up tonight after the sun goes down so I'm not uh, messing around with the, uh, the modules being active. Okay, here they are. They're beautiful. So beautiful and really well packaged. It's a pleasure working with Paul to get all this equipment. So here's the Enphase microinverter, and that puppy is dense. That is a heavy unit. It shows the, uh, the evolution of their design and their efforts for making it just rock solid in the field, in the heat, in the rain. Um, it's got two similar connectors, but you can see they're keyed differently. This one is keyed up on one side, and this one's keyed in the middle. This is the DC input, and that's the AC output. They give you this little adapter from the module connectors that goes in here with the key, which is brilliant. The AC cables are super beefy, really thick and juicy. Look at the amount of copper in that thing, and it uh, really, really well suited for being in harsh conditions. This plugs in here like that, and the they come daisy chained from the factory. These three all connect to each other. One one goes out and into the next one, into the next one. So what I need to do, since I have two separate systems, I need to cut off right about there and then you put these terminators on the whole purpose in life of this thing is to keep the two conductors separated and locked in so that there's no uh, chance of them shorting out so that is all really really good i'm very happy now you might be asking why did i buy three well i've had two of the cheap Chinese ones fail on me so far. So my lesson learned, two lessons learned, always have a spare. Second lesson, always buy quality. There's a saying in the woodworking world and probably many other worlds, buy quality and only cry once. Well, I've cried three times so far in nine months on my little solar power system. So, that's why I'm going with the superb quality of this product. The price is about double of the Chinese modules, but hey, I'm, I'm happy to pay it if I have rock solid power generation, and th these might even be more efficient. I'd be happy with a few more percent of efficiency in the conversion between AC and DC. Uh, I, I opted not to get the Enphase monitoring system, which I have used in the past in my solar company in California. I installed several systems with it and it works well. Uh, but since I've got my own, which is independent from the hardware, um, it's doing the job for me because even though I'm swapping out the Chinese microinverters, my power meter in this box works independently of whatever hardware is installed. So since I don't have a conventional racking system, I put the module up on my balcony and it turns out that it's almost perfect just to zip tie through these four brackets here. So I removed the mounting plate. It's got two screws and a couple of generous blobs of really strong adhesive. And then the, the unit looks like that. And everything is good. So this is what I'm going to continue with. Okay, here we are in the back of the module. We've got the end phase securely mounted with zip ties. The uh, output of the module will come into here using this beautifully keyed connector. If I can do it. Oh, polarity. Genius. And click. Good. So these will come up into here nice and gently through a loop. Then the AC comes out of here 
and will make its way here and into the top of the disconnect. Focus. And that'll be it because the rest of it remains unmodified. Okay, I measured for the terminator here and I measured for wiring it into the breaker here. The terminator has, you cannot see it, but oh, there, there you go. It's got two little channels that point away. So you're meant to strip this off prepare the wires and then stick them in their two little slots and tighten up here. This one I'm going to install ferrules on because if you don't know about ferrules and you're doing any kind of electrical work, man, they are fantastic for screwing down into screw terminals like I've got on that breaker. So I'll put the ferrules on the end of that one. Okay, got the terminator. Terminator wired on and this end is prepped for going into the breaker and focus you ferrules these things are magnificent and this tool is amazing six-sided ferrule squisher get one it'll change your life AC is clipped in terminator is secured and we're just waiting for our chance to rewire this and unplug those and plug them in here. And that will happen after dark tonight and we should power up with the sun tomorrow. Now I gotta go do the one on the other side so I have a matching pair of new technology. Well that one didn't take long at all. Module mounted, cable cut and terminated brought over here ready to go into the the disconnect on the ferrules well it's 6 30 in the morning and I'm a bit groggy but we are up and running look at that the uh, end phase are making power much earlier than the AliExpress ones did they must uh, just that that much better technology built into them we are up and running on new end phase technology so I'm going back to sleep and we'll see what a full day with these looks like so let's wrap this up and I can show you the fantastic day of solar power I had 790 watt hours of generation even with uh, some bands of cloud going through in the morning and then a very heavy rain shower in the afternoon killed a lot of my generation but I was still nine watt hours off my record that I set on March 21st 799 versus 790 so I couldn't be happier with the end phase they're making better power in the low light times and they're peaking much higher than the AliExpress inverter so it's a fantastically better quality product overall and I expect years of great service from them. Here's a little bonus uh, for those of you who have stuck it out to the bitter end. Uh, today I went grocery shopping at Macro which is the closest thing we have to a uh, Costco as you might find in America. And little did I know, but they have solar on the roof. And I saw this big display monitoring screen as I was checking out. And I was dumbfounded. I'm looking at it. It's been running for 370 days, so just over a year. It's made, it's making right now 386 kilowatts of power. And that, that's really good. We could get 500,000 watts on a Costco uh, my solar company back in America and right now they're making 68 percent of their total power consumption They're only buying 32 percent from the provincial electric authority which is the local power grid today it's made 1.2 megawatt hours of energy 
and total 760 megawatt hours of energy. That is incredible. And here's a shot of uh, from Google Maps from space, just so you can see. They've just got a little over half of the roof is solar. So I'm thinking that the total system is probably 400 kilowatts, maybe close to 500 kilowatts. But either way, that's fantastic and good on them. Next time I'm there, I'm going to ask them if I can go up on the roof and see it. We'll see if I get a reaction out of that. Hey, if you found this video interesting, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like my other content, I'd appreciate a subscribe. Take care and see you next time.